Good morning. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, welcome to this time of worship as we celebrate Christ in this absolutely gorgeous Sunday morning. We are glad you're here worshiping in spirit and in truth, especially those who are visiting with us. We're glad you're here. If all would please sign the registration pad, let us know uh, who you are, that we may greet you by name after worship. A lot of things are going on in the life of the church, so please note those in the bulletin. A uh, couple I'd like to make... Uh, uh, make mindful of Wednesday this Wednesday at 7 o'clock is a short meeting for those interested in going on the mission trip next June I think it's like June 26th or 25th uh, right before choir if you're in choir you can still make the meeting uh, it'll be short so if you're interested in the mission trip might be going out to Oklahoma so uh, come join us for that also, a brief meeting of the nominating committee in my office after worship. Uh, please uh, uh, come here. We just have a few more slots to fill, and then we should be all set. Um, Stephen Ministers, our books are in. If you'd like a, uh, your copies, they're in my office as well. Uh, my Bible study will be starting this Thursday evening at 7 o'clock, and we'll be studying the, the, the book of Psalms. So if you'd like to come and, and uh, be a part of that uh, fellowship, uh, this Thursday evening at 7 o'clock, we start studying the book of Psalms. With that, Liz Simmons. I guess I'm on. I told Jim I was going to play the bongos this morning so <laughs> for special music. <laughs> Not really. I don't think you want to hear that. Uh, looks like we're a little sparse out here this morning. I don't know. I guess everybody must have been sleeping because the weather's so cool. Uh, first off, I want to mention, too, about the salad supper for UMW, and that's going to be on Thursday at 6 o'clock. We hope we get more people out of our congregation. So that's one thing we need to keep in mind. Okay, all of our bills are paid, and all of our apportionments are paid. We also have $6,000 in our account. We also have $20,000 in our parking lot fund. And that was mentioned the other night at the meeting. They said when we first started that, they thought they would never get that much money in eight months. So I think we're doing very well with it. And this is tithe month which we are splitting between the parking lot and technical support. And Consecration Sunday is coming up, so we need to be thinking and praying as to our commitment. Thank you for giving of your money and your time. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Um, this next Sunday, the 22nd, uh, the Here Comes Trouble will be starting. So if you have children, grandchildren, neighbors, friends, we will be meeting starting 10 o'clock next Sunday, 10 to 1020. Then right after that, the kids go right back into Sunday school. So I look forward to seeing a lot of the kids there. Thank you. Thank you, Haley. Let us now greet one another in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ.
Please stand and join in the call to worship and remain standing for the opening prayer and the opening hymn, 158. join in the opening prayer. God, your love is amazing. When we stray, you seek us out and set us back on the right path. Though we have no right to your infinite love, you offer it no matter where we find ourselves or how badly we have messed up our lives. May we witness all that you have done for us and all that we do, say, and think. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hymn 158, please. be seated. It is a joy to be in God's house. It's a joy to see so many folks active in the life of the church and and so joyous to see things going on here and and throughout our our community and our country and our world. And so we celebrate God uh, for all the great things that are going on. Uh, There are many things, though, that we need to Uh, Lift up to God because not all is well in the world, so we continue to pray for those parts of the world, uh, Syria and Egypt and places like that, that uh, certainly need God's peace and presence uh, in these days. Also, like to add a couple of prayer requests. Uh, June Miller, 
uh, uh, asked for prayer. She had a pretty significant fall here this past week, and so keep her in your prayers. Also, uh, you see on our prayer, uh, Lynn Taylor, uh, please keep Lynn in your thoughts and prayers. He had a massive stroke this past week, and uh, so please keep him and his family in your prayers. Also, if you can keep in your prayers the family and friends of Amber Dolan. And I know there's someone behind me who has some prayer requests. Before I forget you, Jan. I know. Georgia always thinks of other people, so she's asked me to give prayers for some other um, folks she knows. Uh, Dean Austin, Dale's twin brother, is still in the hospital after having gallbladder surgery last Wednesday. He also has a blood infection and is in ICU. Mm -hmm. Debbie Wright, who is a daughter of Georgia's sister, Lola, passed away. Uh, the funeral was last week. Um, Debbie had cancer. She also asked for prayers for Evelyn Zix. Um, Evelyn's son passed away last week and he had cancer. Evelyn is a classmate of Jean Williams, Norma Fortune, and Georgia Austin. Thank you. Thank you, Jen. Are there others? Marianne. Thank you. Are there others? Oh boy. Uh, his name, Lynn? Alex. Alex. Prayers for Alex. Are there others? Let us go to God in silent prayer. Lord God, we gather in your house this day to give you thanks and praise for the blessings of our day, the blessings of our lives. We come knowing your peace, not the peace that brings freedom from violence or pain or suffering, but the peace in knowing that no matter where our journey leads us, that you are with us, that you will bind our wounds and set us free, a sure and certain hope of your eternal presence with us. Lord, as you hear the prayers of our heart this morning, uh, many families are, are challenged this day. Many people are, are, are struggling with, with illnesses and caring for, for loved ones, Lord, and we just lift them up to you. And sometimes uh, those who are caring for loved ones have a more difficult time than those who are sick. And Lord, we... We just pray for strength and wisdom for them um, in their time. Uh, Lord God, we, we lift up to you uh, uh, the regions of the world that are struggling this day with, with violence and hatred. We just pray that you may intercede in those places. Lord God, we pray for our great nation and our leaders. 
We pray for our community leaders, our, our school administrators, support staff, and teachers and children. Lord God, we pray for our neighbors, uh, those we know and those we do not know, Lord, but you, you love them uh, just as much. Lord God, we pray for our families, our friends. Lord, we pray for those who can't be here this day. We pray for those who are traveling, travel blessings upon them. Lord, we also pray for those who are struggling with their faith, those who are bitter, those who are angry, those who are uncertain, uh, those who have yet to, uh, to know um, your presence in their lives. Lord, we certainly lift all those people up to you. Uh, Lord God, we pray for those who are in the hospital. We pray for those who are homebound. We pray for those who are, who are mourning the loss of loved ones. We especially lift up to you this day, uh, Mary Ann's family, also the family and friends of Donna Hatzel, the family and friends of Debbie Wright, the family and friends of Craig Gallagher, the family and friends of Amber Dolan, and all those others, Lord, that are grieving the loss of loved ones this week. We just pray your Holy Spirit rest upon each and every one of them. Uh, that they may come to know you even more completely, that their mourning may turn to joy uh, with a certain hope of everlasting life for the ones they have lost. Lord God, we also lift up to you Georgia uh, and Amy and her family, for George and Pebble, for Jeanette and Michelle and Ted and Barbara, for Tom and Dean, for Evelyn, for Mark, for Rita, for Alex, uh, for Brian and Heidi and Alex and Lynn, Prayers for June and prayers for Amy uh, and Mary. Lord God, we lift these folks up to your healing presence and saving grace and by your Holy Spirit. Uh, be with each and every one of them. We've lifted up to you by voice and deep within our hearts that you may be with them and offer them your healing and your peace. And now, Lord God, we pray for each other and for ourselves that we may be enlivened by your Holy Spirit to continue the good work that you have begun in each and every one of us. These things we pray through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who through his disciples taught us to pray boldly together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth that it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The scripture lesson this morning is different than printed in the bulletin. The uh, scripture this morning will be from Romans chapter 1 verse 29 to verse 2. You can find it in your pew Bible on page 1123 if you would like to follow along. Now Romans 1, 29 through 2, 3. They have become filled with every kind of wickedness, evil, greed, and depravity. They are full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, and malice. They are gossips, slanderers, God-haters, insolent, arrogant, and boastful. They invent ways of doing well. They disobey their parents. They are senseless, faithless, heartless, ruthless. Although they know God's righteous decree that those who do such, do such things deserve death, they not only continue to do these very things, but also approve of those who practice them. You, therefore, have no excuse, you who pass judgment on someone else. For all, whatever point you judge the other, you are condemning yourself, because you who pass judgment do the same things. Now we know that God's judgment against those who do such things is based on truth. That ends the eating, reading of the, his holy word. May he bless it to the understanding. Now our tithes and offerings.
Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this day. Thank you, Lord, for being with us always uh, throughout our lives. And we give you thanks for the privilege of serving you with our lives and these gifts. Bless them to your ministry. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. I think we're going to start rejoicing. Thank you. All right. I'd like to ask the children to come forward for our children's chat. Come on down. Good morning. Boy, both you guys really smile. Makes us all feel good, I'll tell you that. Have you ever been lost? You've never been lost? Wow, that's great. I want to tell you a story. My family used to go camping. And I was always one who, I didn't always listen to my mom and dad like I should have. And I was out walking early one morning. And I was in the woods, and I got lost. I didn't know where our campsite was. And I know my mom and dad told me I should have stayed close, but, you know, I didn't listen like you do. And, and so I was wondering, I was getting scared. And then guess what? I heard my dad say, Tom, Tom. Maybe not quite that nice, but he was saying. <laughs> and you know, it was so great to hear his voice. And he found me. He, he left our family and came looking for me. And I felt so good when that happened. And then we went back and we had breakfast and everything was okay as far as I remember. But that's kind of what God does sometimes. Sometimes we kind of get lost. Sometimes we might not think about uh, where we are or what we do. And, and sometimes we feel maybe alone and stuff. But guess what? God comes and looks for us and finds us. No matter where we are, God's going to be with us and bring us back. And that's pretty cool. So let's pray. Lord God, thank you for, for, for looking for us, and thank you for being with us always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, thanks for coming up this morning. Glad you're here.
Let us pray. Lord God, open our hearts and minds by the power and presence of your Holy Spirit, that as the scripture is read and your words proclaim that we may be filled with hope, renewal, and the salvation of our souls. Lord God, may your word come through me or in spite of me. Thank you, Lord, for yet another opportunity for us to try to get it right. In Jesus' name, amen. Gospel lesson is from St. Luke's Gospel, the 15th chapter, beginning in the first verse. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, Why, this fellow welcomes sinners and even eats with them. So he told them this parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what a woman having 10 silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it. When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so, I tell you, there is joy in the presence of angels over one sinner who repents. Amazing, there is joy with God finding one sinner. Well, in a society like ours, that just loves to categorize, rank, and separate, do demographic studies of all kinds, and finally judges those uh, demographics, the words of Jesus ought to give us a breath of fresh air. In fact, they ought to just give us all kinds of, of uh, tingles down our spine. And these words, I tell you, there will be joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over the 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. Well, that sounds good. I don't know about you, but I hope that the choir of angels is singing on my behalf here this morning. But not so fast. You know, there's always voices out there, and there was in Jesus' days. For the leaders of the church, those who saw themselves as somehow different from those sinners, stood up and said, we are the chosen. We have not done anything wrong. In fact, to put it another way, we're here to protect all of you from all of them. You know them. It's the same family as the theys. See, the theys and the thems, the tax collectors, the drunks, the thieves, the liars. The list continues on and on, and Paul in, in Romans chapter 1 continues that list. Those people, they and them, those who are full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, craftiness, gossips, that's an interesting one, slanders, God-haters, insolent, boastful inventors of evil, rebellious towards parents. I guess I shouldn't have told that story to the kids. But it goes on, foolish, faithless, heartless, and ruthless. There's a problem with that list. And the problem with Paul's list is we fit at least one of those categories, don't we? When we are honest with ourselves, we fit one of those categories. So Paul continues, and this is where the folks who tend to marginalize others tend to stop reading. 
because it's kind of good to stop reading uh, at the end of chapter 1 of Romans because we are, those, those who, who feel better than another, than them and they, uh, don't want to read on. But the second chapter of Romans starts with a therefore. And I say, when you read the scripture and you get to a therefore or a but, better be careful. Remember when Jesus in Matthew 5 says, but I say to you, don't worry about the one who's killing, but even if you think about being angry at your neighbor, you're as bad as the murderer. So Paul goes, therefore, after having this long laundry list, says, therefore you have no excuse. When you judge others, for passing judgment on others, you condemn yourself. Wow. Those are heavy words, aren't they? When we start talking about judging other folk. Well, that's what the Pharisees were doing with Jesus, essentially. And all the people sitting with Jesus. So we have Jesus again sitting at dinner. The guy loved to eat. Every chapter has Jesus eating with somebody. Of course, that's not a bad thing. But he was sitting around the table with bad people, at least in the eyes of the church folk. But I bet you he was having a lot of fun. I bet you they were telling jokes and laughing and having a good time and great fellowship. You see, they didn't have internet back then where the jokes come all the time. They had to do that over the table, and they were doing that. And they were having fun. And not only was he having fun around that dinner table, but he called them friends. Amazing grace, isn't it? He called all those, all them, and all they, sorry English teachers, friends. So Jesus, as always, stands on the higher ground of the love of God. Rather than judge all these people who are coming to them or he went to them, he celebrates the retrieval of even one of them. He goes out. His, the faith reaches out. He goes out. He doesn't stand and sit and wait for someone. As the scripture said, he told the parable about the shepherd who, who had 99 but one was lost and what did the shepherd do go out and find the one who was lost well Jesus is doing that all the time and Jesus celebrates and says there's going to be joy in heaven when one sinner just one repents and finds their Lord and Savior I'll bet you there's not a whole heck of a lot of joy in heaven for those who judge and exclude the people of God from the table. The point is, God judges everybody to be the same. All of us are the same. We're all in the same boat in God's eyes. We are all sinners in need of God's redeeming grace. At one time or another, we have all been lost, haven't we? Some of us may still be lost. We've all been there. And guess what? God is still seeking us out. You see, Jesus was addressing not the folks around the table, not the flock. Jesus, as always, was addressing the leaders, those who should have known better, those who were judgmental, bitter, angry, self-righteous, those who wanted to ensure they and them knew their place in society. As Anne Lamott wrote, we know we have created God in our own image when God hates the same people we hate. I, for one, a sinner, 
Thank God every day that this fellow Jesus invites us to his table. That probably deserves an amen, doesn't it? I mean, thank God that God cares enough about you and about me and about everyone else that we are invited to the table. And if we can't find the table, guess what? God's going to come look for us. God is going to come seek us out. Thank God. God has sought us out. Otherwise, we never come to know our salvation. Remember when Jesus was hanging on the cross? And the very people who drove nails in his flesh, those people and the people all around him, he looked out and what did he do? He said, forgive them. Not hate them, not exclude them. Forgive them. For they know not what they do. I think sometimes those words are meant for us as well. Forgive them. Share God's redeeming grace with the world around us. That's the key. Saints, that is grace. That is loving someone who doesn't deserve our love just as God loves us, and we don't deserve his love either. It's about God's eternal love for us, and that's the hope, that's the comfort, that's the joy. Now, whoever we are, whatever we have done, wherever our journey has taken us in life, God is with us and loves us and is standing in the gap for us. We have been lost, but now am found. Biblical scholar Donald Barnhouse writes, love that goes upward is worship. Love that goes outward is affection. Love that stoops is grace. You see, Jesus stooped for us. Jesus humbled himself for us. And we are called to do the same. We are called to live in this thing called grace. Not just on Sunday morning. Not just when you're with other church folk. That's a good place to practice. But all the time. Live in the state of grace. And when we accept, when we accept First and foremost, that God welcomes all people, everyone. No matter what they've done, no matter what color they are, no matter what ethnicity they are, God welcomes everyone and seeks everyone out. Guess what? There are no exceptions. No matter what they have done. There are no theys and thems in heaven, saints. There's only we's. And our steps will even be more lightened if we just come to terms with that statement. That's just we. You see, God's grace is transforming. It's changing. I had a dear friend about five churches ago. That's, that's amazing. Five churches ago, every time I saw him in the hallway, I'd say, AC, how you doing? And he said, wallowing in grace. Every time I saw him in the hallway, wallowing in grace. What an incredible witness of faith that is. Wouldn't it be nice just to wallow in grace all the time? When we wallow in grace... When we live a life of grace, we rise to the calling of living out our faith, of witnessing and sharing God's grace in our lives. And when we truly celebrate God's grace, it's pretty simple, really. And when we celebrate the return of the one who was lost, 
And that's a great celebration. Man, we could go into the prodigal son here too. Remember that? Remember the prodigal son's dad? Didn't lambaste him. Didn't do anything of the like, but ran out to him, put his arms around him, gave him a big old ring on his finger, killed the fatted calf, all because the person that he lost was found. We begin to know God's grace when we welcome home those who have been lost. When we seek out the lost, just as we've been sought, we will rejoice in their return and we will come to know the truth of the incredible love of God in our lives. Sometimes that takes work, saints. But man, it's well worth the effort. Because we begin to live that new life. That word joy, that three-letter word joy. Imagine what would happen if we lived in joy every day. No matter how difficult our lives are, we have some folks in our church right now are having some awfully troubling times. And their family's the same. And guess what? I saw the joy. I want to tell you a story. This just happened on Thursday. He won't mind me telling it to you. I was up to see Len Taylor, and he can't talk much at that time, and offered a prayer, and I said, God bless you, Len. I heard his voice, I mean, very, God bless you, pastor. That's grace. That's joy. He's in a tough time. His family's in a tough time, but they're celebrating the joy of knowing that on their journey, God is with them. And he had the great faith to share that joy with this humble preacher. That's what it's all about. The joy of knowing that we've been sought out. And the fact that we are never too sinful for God to save. Never too many chances that God is going to give us. In fact, forgiveness, well, he was talking to Peter, 70 times 7. Take that out exponentially, and that's how many times God's going to give us another chance. God loves us. One last thing. We have been created to be in communion with God. We have been created to be close to our God. So God celebrates when we come home. God celebrates And once God seeks us out and finds us, we see the reality. You know, there's a lot of folks here and beyond these walls that need a witness of grace in their life. They need a witness of hope. I think that's all Jesus is saying. Seek them out. Find them. Offer them comfort. That's grace. In the words of John Newton, who needed an awful lot of grace himself, amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. When we are sought out and found, we will proclaim that phrase to the highest hills. Thank God we have not only been invited, but we have been sought out by God. So 
So as Jesus has told us many times, let us go and do likewise. Let the people of God say, Amen. We stand amazed at the presence, so let us stand and sing together. Number 371. Now may the love of God, the peace and glory of our Lord Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit be with us all now, even to the end of the age. Amen.